Telma uh, provides a full end-to-end -end solution around data reliability, if you may think about it, with the foundation of data observability. Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharti, and today we have with us Mona Rakibe, co-founder and CEO of Telmai. Mona, it's great to have you on the show. Good to be on your show, Swapnil. And it's my pleasure to host you today. Since you are also co-founder and CEO of the company, I would love to know a bit about the origin of the company, what led you to the creation of the company, what problem do you folks solve for the larger ecosystem, and also, what is the story of the name? <laughs> That's an interesting one. So, And it will be weaved into the story. So, uh, Telmai is a data observability company. So what that means is we look at the data from ingestion to consumption of the data to predict the health of the data. And uh, we started Telmai a little over two and a half years back. Me, uh, I'm the co-founder CEO of Telmai and my other partner, Max Lukichev, he's the co-founder CTO. We've spent a lot of our career in enterprise data ecosystem. And we, what we realize in just the last five to eight years, companies have shifted a lot around their data strategy. Like every company is talking about real-time analytics, um, ML AI-based initiatives, the volume, velocity, the scale at which we are operating data has shifted tremendously. But what did not change about the data ecosystem is how we looked at data and how we felt confident about the health of the data, the reliability of the data, did we trust the data. Teams were still using old school tools and technology which were built on legacy system to predict the health of the data, validate this. And Max, who's my co-founder, worked at SignalFX, which is an infrastructure observability company. Uh, I, I'm a product manager, engineer turned product manager turned uh, co-founder. Max has always stick to the line of technology and data science. And when he worked at Signal Effects, he felt that the technology and the scale that we have today, we can solve data reliability using AI techniques, statistical analysis, and in a nutshell, high compute. How can we use low-cost compute to calculate and figure out the health of the data? So that really gave birth to Telmai. Uh, tell me AI. That's how our name is, tell my. So it is the sigma in our name is the mathematical foundation of everything we do. It's the summation. And uh, till date, it is the strongest foundation that we have, that every problem we look at, and is this a problem that needs scale? And if it needs scale, it needs to be done in a mathematical manner. So that's a little bit about the name and the problem we are trying to solve. The company, as I mentioned, is uh, um, almost three years old. We are seed stage fund, um, seed, seed stage company, eight and a half million raised from Glasswing Ventures, Zeta Venture Partners, 406. We were also in Y Combinator Summer 21 program. We built partnership with Google, Databricks, Snowflake, and have customers like Merkle, Clearbit, Datastax um, using the product already. So that's the long and short of me, the company, and the name. If you look at the observability space, um, it has evolved over time from the days of logging, tracing, monitoring. Uh, the scope has also grown a bit. But it has also become a very crowded space. There are a lot of companies who are, you know, working in this observability space. Um, talk a bit about how you have seen the evolution of observability and what specific niche that you are kind of addressing in this crowded space where you are not just another player, but you found some gaps and you felt that, hey, you know what, you, you talked about signal effects, that, hey, these were the niche that need to be fulfilled. These are the customers who needed help. That's where, you know, uh, Telmai is coming to help them. So twofold question, evolution and your role. The evolution has been like, uh, if you look at observability, it's been uh, existing from control theory times, right? Like, how can you look at the external systems uh, features and then predict the health of any system, right? So that's like old definition of observability. In the recent past, the tech world embraced that philosophy in many areas from API observability, infrastructure observability. So the companies like Datadog, uh, Signal Effects, and others started using those philosophies to predict the health of infrastructure. Uh, 
Now, in similar manner, so in my opinion, observability is a concept and the use cases are evolving and the different industries are adopting it for different use cases. So with that said, the first thing, uh, Telmai, is specifically in data observability space. That means we look at the data itself, like the data that's fueling your key business decision, the data that's fueling your ML and AI initiatives. And we look at that data and observe and predict the health of the data. So within the data observability ecosystem also, like Gigaum did a report, uh, which we shared with you as well, and there were 15 top, top vendors. So although the category is four or five years old, there are 15 top vendors. So talk alone about the top vendors, then imagine how many vendors are there. The problem is very widespread. So obviously there is a need in the market. So companies are identifying that needs. And then there are many companies evolving, evolving in that space because of the need. Now, how do we distinguish ourselves in this hyper-crowded mode, right? So to be honest, a lot of people ask me, really, you want to do data observability? It's already like a Red Sea. So many companies are already there. Uh, what Max and me really had a very, very strong intuition was how we solve this problem. First thing we knew is data quality and data validation has to be shifted to the left of your data pipelines. That means where the problems occur to the source system, which meant that we had to have a system that supported any kind of underlying sources, right? With Whether it's a legacy system, uh, on-prem data storage, even streaming like Kafka, PubSub, or uh, Red Panda for that matter, or the modern data warehouses, cloud-based data warehouses, Delta Lake ecosystem. So having the full breadth of the ecosystem needed a different architecture uh, to kind of read data from any system and process it in a decoupled manner. So that is our number one differentiation and how we do it and how uh, we support different data sources in different format and so on and so forth. The next thing is we also knew true data quality can be achieved only when we find accuracy and where the data problems are at column value level, right? So we go super deep, do machine learning based anomaly detection. We can find things like value outliers, out of range values, statistical drift over time, how this data has um, changed. So we go broad, but we also go deep. And the last thing is, how do we do it without adding any latency on your data? Most people want the results and the data pipeline to be flowing constantly without any interruptions, without any excessive costs. So we've also made sure that the way we have designed Telmai is that we keep all of this with keeping the cost low and the latency on your data pipeline. So those are three fundamental differences which we designed Telmai with, and that's starting to give dividends well as we are accelerating in the market. And as you know, we were like a leader in GigaRoom report in spite of the fact we are relatively younger, uh, much less funded, but this message around how we have designed it and how we solve has received a very good um, uh, validation from the market. Are there any specific industries or verticals that you folks are serving, uh, or it doesn't really matter whichever, whoever, in today's this cloud native, you have to have observability strategy in place. But I would love to hear about some use cases or the industry that you cater to. So the solution is very uh, agnostic to vertical uh, in general. And I we try to do a lot of research of if there are any industries that would be early adopters of this, it's a new category, right? So there's not an existing budget. There's a lot of awareness we have to do. Uh, we notice that there are certain scale of companies and industries that understand specifically if we do it with the data quality and reliability angle. So there are verticals like B2B data vendors or like uh, financial industries, healthcare, those companies are the faster ones to identify this problem and understand the solution differentiation. We as a company have not done that segmentation heavily yet. Uh, we are getting like uh, opportunities from all over the case and the platform is architected to do support these vertical without any adjustments, right? So in the end, it's a data warehouse. Uh, it has data which is all over the place, all different type of volume. However, what I notice, Nil, is that industries which have reached a certain level of maturity with their data initiatives have identified this problem better. 
and most of the times these are enterprises so mid markets um, or smaller companies are still or digitally native uh, built companies are still not hit the problem of scale and solving so the tendency of people is usually let me build some validations and we are selling to highly technical people right like these people can build anything right so there there are always this natural um, inclination that let's start building something and then they hit the problem of like should we sit and maintain a tool which is for data observability data validation or still should we build what is core to our company and that realization takes um, place faster for larger companies who have hit that maturity state also an ml based um, uh, anomaly detection takes much more investment to start building to maintain and so on so it's a little bit more on the phase of the company the realization of the problem than the vertical itself these days one of the you know hottest technologies or topic is generative ai ai has been around for a long time but generative ai has kind of rekindled interest in ai uh I want to talk about generative AI from two different lenses. One is uh, observability for generative AI. That means people are doing all these uh, generative AI related things and how observability can help those systems. At the same time, generative AI for observability where you are leveraging a lot of generative AI technologies to further improve uh, observability. How do you look at it? So one thing is there, Sotmil, I really love technology and I'm sure you do too. We all are like really big technology buffs. But there's also a risk here, right? That when we love technology so much, the question is, do we put technology before the use case? And, and we all have to always keep that in mind that as much as we love technology, the bigger focus should be on the use case. So you're absolutely right. For Telmai also, there were two dimensions when we generative AI and AI has always existed, right? Like we all, just in like my life span, I've done a lot of machine learning initiative. November of this year with OpenAI and ChatGPT coming in, this just accelerated because it got more and more accessible to people, right? Like it's not just the big budget people who are doing. I'm talking to so many people, it's already on their roadmap. With Telmai, we took a two-step approach. First is internally, where all can we use Gen AI, uh, whether it's in marketing, whether it's de- engineering, building test cases, also within our product feature functionality, which features can be used or developed using Gen AI faster, cheaper, better, right? So use case first, but let's start adopting it. And we found many use cases, uh, including, as I mentioned, like uh, building our test cases, how we do meantime resolution of problems, data observability problem. Can we aggregate data from different sources, from different logs and uh, create uh, email response which is more actionable so that's one dimension for sure which telma is definitely uh, focusing heavily the second dimension is we are at a very amazing spot where we are a prerequisite for any ml and da- data initiative right even analytics area if you don't have a good foundational data pipeline your ml and analytics use cases are not going to give the right roi So at Telmai, we did a research. We all knew, everybody knows uh, there is a hypothesis that you need good data for um, uh, getting a better Gen AI result. So we did a a research recently where we ran some uh, test and on if you pre-process the data a little bit and control the noise level of data that goes through your model training or fine tuning, there was 10 to 15% precision difference if you do that. So that means if you control the quality of the data, you are getting better precision on your Gen AI initiative. Also, the cost is a big big factor because if you go and just push data and start training it without doing any prep work, conditioning, and so on, there's a tremendous cost of redoing that, retraining those models, and so on and so forth. So we will continue as a company to invest in that and prove out that and educate the industry that, yes, Gen AI is a shiny ball in the room, but let's have your data hygiene first. Uh, security is one of the areas, although we don't look at that. Uh, Telma is fully doing securely whatever we do, but we are not a data security company, but security, governance, data quality hygiene, uh, all of these are really the foundational pillars for the success of your Gen AI. And Telma sits very well in that uh, story. 
I also want to talk a bit about the solution services that you folks offer. Give us a quick you know, overview of what do you folks offer and if you can also just walk us through the evolution of your solutions over time. If there were any announcement, any updates recently, um, that would be great as well. Telma uh, provides a full end-to-end solution around data reliability, if you may think about it, with the foundation of data observability. And why I say it slightly differently, I can say it easily that it's a data observability platform. But what does data observability do to a typical customer? A, you can profile data, scan data, get insights about data across your entire data pipeline and get full fidelity of health metrics. Uh, The other thing we can do is we can help you with what we learn about your data, establish some data quality guardrails, rules, contracts uh, around data quality, which helps. These two things help with knowing what you already know, right? What we call as the known unknowns, the issues that can happen in the data. The third thing Telmai helps is understanding anomalies in the data, which are usually very hard to find using validation rules or eyeballing sample data, which traditionally was done through stewardship. We'll use machine learning to detect anomalies, drifts in the data. So example, a certain company never had a revenue more than X million dollars. And suddenly you see that the revenue has spiked by 40%. It could be a true positive. It could be a false positive. But somebody needs to look at it to see if that this was like just an additional zero and data engineering problem or it's a true. Because these type of issues have impact on business right away. So we will look, help you look at these type of anomalies and resolve them. And last thing, uh, surprisingly, um, every company still has a lot of data which is in uh, either legacy system or on systems which are they are trying to migrate. Telma will also help you understand we are a metric monitoring system. So are your metrics drifting between the source system and uh, consuming system? Are there any inconsistencies between, let's say, your legacy? Uh, on-prem databases and cloud data warehouses. Is that data is moving properly? Is there missing data? Has the data duplicates increased? Those type of issues as well. And the use case that I mentioned just earlier, like prepping your data for your machine learning profiling, we call it like data binning. So you separate data. Suspicious data can go for either like be parked somewhere else and go for either remediation floors or like reviews. But the good data flows in. So your pipeline is still kind of pretty clean. And then you have like this time to review. So there's a lot of stuff we do around data reliability to accelerate your journey on data reliability. And you asked about what we did new. So in all honesty, when we started Telmai, we were like focusing a lot on like, how do we do like a product led growth bottoms up? And we quickly realized the tremendous momentum is where like um, the business impact is. So we moved to enterprises, like we moved more towards an enterprise, both from a sales motion, but also value proposition, which meant that we had to change our product direction. We had to support like um, bring your own cloud. Right. If a client is already in Azure ecosystem, we wanted to make sure we deploy in their environment, in their account, and no data moves out of their account. So again, uh, same thing for Google, um, uh, uh, GCP, and uh, Amazon. So we are now can be deployed in customers all three accounts, um, all three uh, key cloud providers. So that's number one. We added functionalities which are more. Uh, I was talking to somebody earlier today and they had hundred thousands of rules. How do they move to a fully autonomous, right? Like even when Tesla moved to autonomous driving, we still can't leave our steering wheel, right? So as much as we say that let's do ML-based anomaly detection and DQ, they still want to keep their rules. So we we created capabilities to support the rules that they have so that they can build and manage their rules inside Telmai. So uh, capabilities like this, time travel capabilities, which means that how much time should your machine learning model take to learn about your data instead of like waiting for that? Can we look at historic data and predict uh, anomalies uh, and so on? So that accelerates time to value. So we did launch a last release, which was one of the largest release or biggest release we had, which brought a lot of these capabilities, which specifically enterprises would embrace and what we learned through our conversations in the recent past. Well, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the company, walk us through the whole evolution, not just of the company, but the whole observability space. 
thanks for all those insights. And uh, I see, you know, you folks are doing a lot of great things. So I would love to have you folks back on the show and continue to talk about, you know, uh, the, the work that you folks are doing to solve a larger problem for a much larger ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Swapnil. It was a pleasure. And thank you so much to put the word out about the space, the problem it solves. We definitely need more of these conversations to spread about data observability and the problem it's solving for the general audience. Appreciate it.